Good morning. My name is Sheena Burrell. I'm the AMA coordinator in London, and it's very good to have your company this morning as we share morning prayer together for Wednesday, the 19th of July. And this month, we're praying for the Diocese of Zambasia. This is Zambasia here, running from the Indian Ocean on this side across to Malawi on the other side. So right across the northern part of Mozambique. It's very good that we are all together today and praying together. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. May Christ the day star dawn in our hearts and triumph over the shades of night. Visit us with your salvation and save us, sustain us with your gracious spirit. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made, as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is 119, Psalm 119, reading from verses 153 to the end. I have longed for your salvation, O God. O consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. According to your promise, give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. Many there are that persecute and oppress me, yet I do not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous judgments endure for evermore. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation, and I have fulfilled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies, and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. 
let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth, shall pour forth your praise. When you have taught me your statutes, my tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you, and let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O oh, seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. God of mercy, swift to help us, as our lips pour forth your praise, fill our hearts with the peace you give to those who wait for your salvation. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Our New Testament reading is 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, reading from verses 1 to 15. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God, that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we expected, they gave themselves, first to the Lord and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that as he had already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the eagerness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it, according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable, according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who, who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. The Benedictus. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like the stars for all eternity. 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we hold before you today and all that is required of us as we walk through the day. May we act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God, in all the things we face. In our daily tasks, the mundane and the repetitive, the exciting and the fulfilling. In the people we meet, both the planned encounters and the meetings, but also in the interruptions on the road. Give us grace and compassion to be your arms and your feet in our local communities and in the worldwide body of Christ. We pray for your church that we may be good news to the poor. We may be instruments of justice to the oppressed and that we treasure your precious creation. Prompted by your spirit, we pray today for those suffering from extreme temperatures across China, Europe and the United States, for the forest fires that have consumed so many homes, for the challenges we all face about global warming, climate crisis, and the ever-increasing emergencies we hear about every day. We think too of those who are homeless because of war, the scenes that we have seen from Ukraine, and those that we know of from Cabo Delgado, where terrorism has displaced internally over a million people. We pray for those lost homes lost communities and we thank you for all who host the IDPs, for the international organisations and for the family and friends in hugely extended households. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for our Alma partnership. And we pray for travelling mercies for Bishop Manuel Ernesto as he leaves Nampula today to arrive in London tomorrow for the celebration of the 25th Alma Sunday and for time with London's eco champions. Father, may this time of fellowship be blessed, inspirational and may it be a light unto our feet. 
this Wednesday in London's cycle of prayer, we pray for the missionary diocese of Zambasia, and in particularly this week for the area of Rio Shiri, the area in Mozambique along the Shiri River as it joins the Zambezi River. We pray for the parish of Gile, for Joel Catopola, for St Mark Makuba and Archdeacon George Estevar, and for the parish of Rio Shire and Usene Azizi. Here in London, we pray for St Luke's Radcliffe Gardens, Dave Matthews, Lay Minister Louisa Kim, and Linda Tinteren, the Administrator. And we pray for St Mary and St Peter, West Brompton, and St Jude West Brompton, and Jenny Welsh, the Vicar, and Jane Elland, the Administrator. In the wider Anglican Communion, we pray for the Diocese of Victoria Nyanza in Tanzania, praying especially for Bishop Zephaniah in Duza. Will you encourage us, inspire us and enable us, Lord, to be a blessing to one another, to comfort and console, challenge and cheer, to offer faith and fortitude, strength and support? Will you give us a longing to build up each other as fellow disciples, nurtured in your love? Lord of eternity, creator of all things, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you open the way for us to resurrection, that we may enjoy your bountiful goodness. May we who celebrate your servants Gregory and Macrina press onwards in faith to your boundless love and ever wonder at the miracle of your presence among us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. So in Angola, London and Mozambique, we say together, thanks be to God. I do hope you're going to follow Bishop Manuel's visit on our social media feeds in the next week. It would be lovely to have your company, your prayers, your comments and your support. Thank you for joining us. And please remember, if you would like to contribute and host an Alma Morning Prayer, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. I hope you have a really good day today. <laughs>